My sister had been asking for some side tables for a while now, so I decided that I'd make her a pair for Christmas. Given that I arrived back from university 10 days before Christmas, I didn't have long to make them, so apologies if some areas are a little skimmed over in the video. The tops of the tables feature a circular moulding framing a field of ash burl veneer. The moulding is made from solid oak, so I began by gluing up an octagon that I could then route into a circular shape. I cut each section of the octagon to the same length using a stop lock on the mitre gauge. A chop saw would have made life much easier, which is why it's now on the to buy list. I knocked together a jig for gluing up the octagons using the off-cut wedges from cutting the angle of the octagon. I used opposing wedges to clamp the pieces against stop blocks which were screwed to a melamine board. The angle was out by 1 or 2 degrees over the 16 cuts, which wasn't the end of the world. Once the glue had dried, I screwed each half to a piece of plywood, screwing through a waste area, and then ran the plywood against the table saw fence to create two flat and parallel surfaces, which I could then glue together, using the jig to apply pressure again. With all the glue dry, it looks a little something like this. I screwed each octagon down to a sheet of ply, and used the router to create the profile for the moulding. Using SketchUp, I had calculated the required pivot radius for each router bit for each section of the profile. I drilled holes at these radii in the trammel, and slowly worked my way to the finished profile. I used a combination of regular passes and controlled climb cuts to produce the cleanest surface possible. The shallow groove in the profile is to accept some ebony stringing, the screw is 1.5mm wide. I glued the stringing in so it was just proud of the surface, then once the glue had dried I flushed it up with a sharp chisel. With all the routing steps completed, I could unscrew the moulding from the ply, and use a flush trim bit to remove the remaining waste in the centre. I then used a rebate cutter in a number of passes to create a shoulder that would sit over the edge of the ash veneer ply top panel. I used the same router jig as earlier to cut two circles of half inch birch ply that I could glue the veneer to. I didn't get any footage of the veneering process since it was my first time but I was reasonably happy with the result. I didn't have any 2 inch oak stock for turning the legs from, so I cut 4 lengths of inch and a quarter stock and glued it into 2 legs. To save on clamps, I clamped all 4 pieces at the same time. With the glue dry, I could then square them up before knocking off the corners to make turning easier. Because of the way my table saw blade tilts, I had to partially bury the blade in a sacrificial fence to do this. To turn the profile of the legs, I printed out a one-to-one -one image with all the key transition points marked on it. I could then reference from this diagram to get all the transition points in the correct place on the leg. With the blank in the lathe, I could turn it until it was round, ensuring that I didn't go any smaller than the maximum diameter required. I marked the transition points with a pencil, then made my way along the length, turning it until it matched the profile that I wanted. Once I had turned the legs, I needed to route the sliding dovetails for the feet. I printed off some templates for cutting blocks that I could screw to each end of the legs, that would allow me to rotate the leg by 120 degrees so I could route the three slots at the router table.
Here you can see the blocks fixed to the legs. They have three square corners cut into them that will reference off the router table fence. I first use a three quarter inch bit to mill a flat spot before routing the dovetail grooves. I printed templates for the feet and spray mounted them to the feet blanks. I then used the mitre gauge to cut the outer face of the sliding dovetail. Since not all the templates were glued on at the same angle, I had to adjust the mitre gauge for each cut. To ensure that the bottom of the feet were perpendicular to the shoulders of the tenons, I held the tenon against the mitre gauge with it set to 90 degrees to make the cut for the bottom of the feet. Before cutting the feet to their final shape, I routed the dovetails to match the groove in the table leg resulting in something that looked a little like this. Using the bandsaw I could then cut the legs to the correct profile. I used a rasp and sandpaper to smooth the surface and then pass them through the planer, removing 0.1 of a millimetre just to get rid of the paper template. I used a roundover bit at the router table to ease over the edges slightly. Here's a before and after shot of the rough sawn foot compared to the finished item. And finally, some finished photos. In the background of the left hand photo is the table that the design was based on. I hope that you all had a great holiday period. It was really great to get back into the shop again. Until next time though, thanks for watching.